Um, the, my problem with South Coops is that the, the problems that exist in the back half of last year are still there now, mm -hmm. right? We'll talk about Sharks in a minute, Coop, but when I see the Sharks play this year, the things that stopped them being successful at the back end of the year, they've addressed. Mm -hmm. They're playing a really physical style. They're playing through an opposition. Where with South, I'm seeing them being dogged by the same problems again. And, you know, Lachlan Lock Illis has been dropped. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think a lot of us saw that coming. Yep. I don't think... They don't so much need a, a, you know, player changes. They need a change of system. Yeah. I think there's two parts. I think... There's something in the South Sydney spirit that's not there. Like, they had it this time last year. What was it, 11 rounds top of the table flying? Yeah. So there's something there that they haven't fixed. And from a pure football perspective, their edge defence is, is not up to standard. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. leading into that game, I sort of thought that Reese Walsh might carve up, and he did, because he is the hardest defender as a, in terms of an edge mm. defence to stop. And if they are passive, miss a tackle... He did what he wanted to do. Um, and Dimitri is a hell of a lot of pressure around at the moment. Like, enormous. Enormous. There's you know, Luttrell, Cody, Cam Murray is the captain. I know they're missing Campbell Graham and Jack White and comes back for his mm. first. But before a ball was kicked, arguably that paper, that team on paper, poof, mm. hardly any sort of um, cracks. Yes, but Campbell yeah. Graham out, Jack Whiten out for the first two. I think that's where their edge defence has suffered deeply. Dean Hawkins deserves a chance. I've seen a lot of Dino play. Um, lower grades, he's a good, good player. I, I, when, I, when I say that they need a change of system, that was the reason that I might have gone. If I was Demetrio, I would have went and pushed Jack in, into six. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is... One of Where's the things Cody we, going? I'd put him seven. Right, okay. Because what, when I say change the system, at the moment, South are very much pass. Pass first, pass second, pass third. You know, looking to play around an opposition. I, I think they just need to address that. I think they need to switch a little bit and become a little bit more run-centric. Their two tries after half-time were playing through the opposition. Yeah. And I think putting Whiten into the halves would really straighten them up and simplify their game. I think if they can just simplify their game and be a little bit more run first, mm. I think that, well, I know it would re reduce their errors which is really, it's a big problem. Yeah. And, the other, and if you're reducing your errors, it's putting less pressure on, on your defence. Yeah. I think when you talk about errors, for me, it's more simple than that. Like, the football is like a gold bullion, right? Like, mm. treat it with the respect it is, particularly. And if you have 17 players thinking it's OK if we make one error each, there's 17 errors in a game that you mm. just can't cover. So I understand your theory around Walker and White and but both left-sided players, one's yeah. going to have to play on the right. Who becomes yeah. a dominant kicker? Like, there's a few things yeah. that come into that for me, but I understand where you're coming from. I, I think, look, uh, your leaders are the best players, the highest-paid players because of a reason. They're the most yeah. influential, both good and bad. Yep. So for me right now, the leaders of South Sydney need, not be, need to be more influential positively yep. than negative at the moment. And you can sit and talk around systems or whatever, but ultimately mm. they have a very good team. It's a very good Put team. the people in their best play in their yeah. positions and put the responsibility on those leaders to deliver. Coop, title-winning teams have great talent, yeah. but they've got an underdog mentality. They're aggressive. Yep. You know, like South Sydney could borrow a fair bit from Canberra at the moment. Yep. Yes, Canberra, yes, Canberra, yes, they could. Canberra have come into this season, right? They, they lost Jack, their, their star player, and they've got together yep. with the coach, with Ricky, yep. and said, right, oh, what do we need to do to be successful? And they know exactly what their identity is. Yep. You know, they're gritty, they're tough, they retain possession, right? And they challenge you with their defence, they make you fight for everything, and they're going great. Now, yep. that, that's hard, now that sort of, uh, sort of football is hard to sustain, yep. and you're going to have your down days. But if South Sydney, South Sydney need to start to treat their talent as the icing on the cake. Yes. And when you do the grit, when you do the character stuff, when you do the hardest parts of the game well, all of, all of a sudden the easiest part, like attack and scoring points, mm. works. Canberra Raiders didn't win a game more than 12 points last year. Mm. This year, grit, character, determination. They don't have the talent that South Sydney have, but all of a sudden they've won two games this year by more than 12 points. Yeah. Why? Mm. Not because they're any more got an attacking flair. Mm. It's because they've done the hard parts well. The other team surrender 
and they continue on playing the way that they know because they, we spoke about last week, they know their identity. They do. And I think that's where South Sydney are. Uh, Broncos South game, I thought both sides looked flat early. Broncos were able to elevate themselves very much, thank you, thanks to uh, Reese Walsh. Yeah. Listen, I want to talk about Reese Walsh's try under the post. Reese Walsh most of the time receives that ball on, on the sweep shapes. And we said uh, uh, this numerous times in this podcast, is a sweep shape, when you come around the sweep, it's a cul-de-sac because you, you really can't... You're on a one-way street. You're heading down there. Reese Walsh is successful in those plays because he's quick, silver, fast. That first step quickness he's got, and he can accelerate. It's quite amazing. But he's doubly dangerous when he stands at first receiver and receives the ball square. And if you watch him the other night, like, the try the other night, he catches the ball just slightly wider than normal first receiver pass. And what that's done, if, the defence can't... They can't outside in him. Yep. So they've got to steady because they're trying to protect, protect the edge defence. But all the options are available there. They're steadying, they're holding back, and the threat to go out, the threat with his footwork. Um, I just think it's... I, I'd love to see him playing that first receiver role a little bit more. Well, he actually plays first receiver more than Ezra Mam does, mm. uh, and that's a good thing. Um, in terms of that try, the thing that I loved about it is that, say, the sweep line that you, you reference, you, if you run it on a 45 degree angle that way, your hips, your shoulders are going there. Therefore, yep. your eyes don't see what's on the inside. And as you say, there's a cul de sac. If something shows up to the outside, then you hit for it. What Reese Walsh did really well is he was square, his eyes were down the field, and as that ball comes to him, he sensed space. Yeah. Now, I, I use this as a Munster reference. Sometimes when you're a ball player, the biggest threat sometimes is three or four defenders away because of their ability to skip back across. Yeah. And that ball comes into Reese Walsh's hands. The defenders opposite have alarm bells, but the ones that he went through just have a micro nap they because do. they don't think he can come back. They think they can have the rest. As the ball comes yeah. through, he senses space, the micro nap happens, he's right foot, right foot, and the acceleration to get through there mm. made defenders look poor and it was more how good he was than what they were doing. But I love the fact that if you're a defender opposite Reese Walsh, it's not the one or two defenders opposite that need to be alarm bells. It is yeah. four or five on either side of him because he can skip across. So, you know, fullbacks and fast men, great runners of football playing first receiver, Tom Travojevic. That's his game. Yep. You know, it's just bang, testing those middle defenders He's all way the time. more powerful mm. than Reese. Reese than brings Reece. a different first yep. receiver role. But similar, yeah. Slater, when Slater would jump in the first yep. receiver. I, I remember you blokes in two... I think it was 2008 semi-final against Brisbane. It came to mind when Reese scored the other night and it just shows you how dangerous, like, Reese and Billy are, the blokes who can... who spook defenders with their speed. They're concerned they're going to be, you know, uh, beaten on the outside and they chase a little hard. In that game... Billy's standing under the post as first receiver. Cameron feigns one way, hits Billy, and Billy's got his shoulder square and he's fading. But the moment he catches the ball, he just goes chop back on the inside and scores. It's just a, a, a great example of quick guys with footwork and the yeah. problems they cause. And I think it doesn't matter what position you play. If you're a ball player and you want to beat a defence, you've got to do things quicker than the defence can react. Mm. For example, Billy or, or Reese or even Turbo. Like, when you decide to go, you're all in and you're giving it everything because a centimetre here or there is a difference. And yep. I love the fact that the best players do things quicker than the defence can react to it and that's why they go through untouched. I want 